Hi everybody, I am Marco Zucchini and I am a PhD student at Sapienza and this is a um, lecture introducing microcontrollers, their components and how they interact with the external world and we all, all we are also we are also gonna see um, Home Embed OS framework and um, Google STM boards which are the boards that we are you are mainly using in in, in the course and so this is the agenda of our class we are going to win I'm going to introduce you what is a microcontroller and uh, we are going to review a little hard the Harvard architecture um, which is another kind of computer design computer architecture um, instead of um, von Neumann which is the, the one that is used by our computers but we're going to see it later then we're going to explore how the STM microcontroller um, boards is composed in particular the microcontroller that we are going to use uh, which is STM F4 01RE uh, and the components that um, the main components that we um, that compose this uh, this board and how the, they works. And finally, we are going to see how Harman Bedo what Harman Bedo is. Uh, it features how to work with it um, using its IDE, um, how is how its uh, architecture, and we're going to see also a little example, hoping that um, it will be able for us to maybe have an hands-on class or uh, in order to explore better what Harman Bad OS is and how it works so as I said uh, we're going to see first how I, uh, um, what a microcontroller is and uh, microcontroller is the main actor in the world of embedded systems where embedded systems are the systems that um, don't is there that are not designed to um, execute computation in um, heavy computational tasks but they are uh, con but uh, systems where um, a little computer it's embedded in, in the, the the an object to execute a specific task uh, so as i said the main actor in a bad system is the microcontroller and um, the microcontroller essentially is a small computer on a chip that, um, as I said, it's not designed for um, uh, concurrent uh, concurrent tasks. But like, for example, while you're using a, a lap, uh, desktop PC, um, well, because in while you you are using your desktop PC, you are listening to music, you are I don't know writing something you're chatting, you're surfing on the internet, so this is a chip that it's a, little, it's a little computer that is designed to execute just a little task and um, but we will see that it has the same components um, the main same components of a, a normal PC so as I said it has a control processing unit which is the core of the of the of the microcontroller and its main task it's the same of, of, of our computer uh, which is to execute uh, computations and so on we have um, to we have a memory of course where we have both data memories and program memory and program memory is, is the memory that um, um, the microcontroller continuously execute and um, to in order to achieve its tasks um, as well for um, the our our desktop PC we have a clock which is the engine of, of, of our uh, of our um, computer and it gives us the the, 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 the time the, the time of for executing the uh, the, the computations okay and it, it's present also in microcontroller and it's derived from an oscillator a crystal oscillator usually and finally um, since this microcontroller needs to interact with the external world uh, we um, as well as our computers 
add some peripherals in that we need to use to input and output stuff to our um, CPU, memory, and so on. We in, in, our, in the new microcontroller, we have uh, some facilities to interact with the external peripherals. <coughs> and we will see how to interact with the main important ones. Actually, it's maybe the main focus of our lecture is to don't, don't go into details of how central processing unit works, memory, and so on, because it, it's mostly the same of the of, of, uh, of our desktop PC, but we mm, well, there are some differences, but anyway, in the concept it's more or less the same. And um, anyway, we'll see how to uh, how the microcontroller interacts with the external rules through the peripherals, okay, and the protocols that um, use it. Okay. Microcontroller is widely used everywhere in our daily life. It's used um, in a, from a, in a lot of objects. For example, in a cell phone, we in a phone we have, um, we have microcontrollers working working in it. We have a microcontroller into cards, into printers, into walkie-talkie iPods, and so on. And the big advantage is one of the big advantages of microcontroller is the fact that it's a very tiny object, and so you can put it everywhere and add computation everywhere. Why is it adding computation? Because, for example, when I would, when, when, where would I want to use a microcontroller is when I want to add intelligence to some secrets, for example. Uh, for example, let's see this example. I have this, um, this little LED that I want to blink. And in order to blink it and to turn it on, I need to push a button, okay? And I if, you want, if I want to blink it many times, I have to push these buttons a lot, a, a lot of times. Um, <coughs> so this is this is where uh, a use of a microcontroller would totally make sense because in this situation we want to uh, add an, in, uh, an, in, an in, uh, like a grain that once we press uh, the button, okay, it understand this, it get this this signal and it produces some some external output, blinking as many times as we want. Or on the, at the team intervals, the, in the intervals that we want, it blinks the this this, this LED, and um, achieving a, a, a adding intelligence to our systems and our secrets. As uh, this, uh, this was just a little slide to show you how uh, the uh, microcontroller um, it's com um, it's composed, and uh, it's um, it's very small secrets this is maybe i think this is the um, cpu this is the memory and as you can see here there are um, a lot of little 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 wires which are the connections of the, um, the peripherals with the with the cpu so these are um, these wires allow us to connect stuff to this little pin here in order to um, to, 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 to have external signals for our microcontroller. So, as I said, uh, we are not using a classical phone Neumann architecture, um, but we are using an Harvard architecture. What is, um, just to remind, a phone Neumann architecture is a, it's a theoretical, theoretical design based um, on, uh, on the concept that we store our uh, program and data in memory and we want them to communicate with the, with the, with the, with our central processing unit and to do it we just we just have in phonomen architecture we just have one single bus for fetching instructions and transferring data okay um, um, another guy the phonomen was a guy that invent that creates this architecture another guy which is Harvard in creates another architecture that allows us to access data and program memory simultaneously okay no, what this was not possible for example in the in our phone domain architecture that's uh, and it's, uh, it's the, 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 the architecture the classic architecture of microcontroller and it allows us to speed up a little what the, the 
some tasks because of this uh, architecture okay <coughs> so remember that a phenomenal architecture I just just had a, one single bus while um, here the the, the in Harvard architecture we have one program memory bus and one data memory bus so uh, this was a little very short and introduction to microcontrollers and uh, now we are going to explore uh, how uh, STM microelectronic board the our STM microelectronic board is composed and we are going to explore its main features so so uh, this is the like I don't know how many of you knows how do we know and this is the correct speak the, the the corresponding the, the same of Arduino Uno in uh, STM microelectronics, which is the Nucleo F401RE, so is the most used, I think, I guess, uh, board in the STM uh, environment. And as you see, we have uh, um, the microcontroller here, the microcontroller unit here in the middle. We have our oscillator here giving how us the, 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 the time of for executing our computation and we have several pins that allow us to which are these things here and these things here which has, these are compatible with Arduino Uno um, pins which allow us to to um, interact with the external worlds and each of it um, has some particular um, mm, peculiarity and it allows us to interact with different protocols and now we are going to explore them in fact as you can see here here this is the architecture of our board and um, as you can see except for here this is the system we have uh, the oscillator and so on we have some mm, facility that allows us to communicate with the external world and we are mainly exploring this in the next slides, um, we are going to explore how some connectivity protocols, and uh, we are going to explore them uh, now. Uh, then we are going to explore uh, the, the the timer that allows us to um, count, of course, and executing and delaying task for uh, using the, the timer. And finally, we are going to see. Um, Briefly, because it's a very huge chapter, how um, analog to digital converter converter works, and um, yes, this is what we mainly see for this architecture here. Uh, so let's start with the connectivity protocols. We are going to see I squared C, USART protocol, and the SPI. Um, but first. Uh, let's understand what the serial communication is. In fact, we are going to these protocols are serial communication protocols, uh, so uh, that allows to communicate with the external peripherals. Um, and in this kind of communication, that are, are not trans are not parallelized, transferred in, in parallel in a parallel way. And uh, but these are transferred serially, so one after the other, and um, you can imagine why. Because, um, so as you can see in the picture, uh, sending transferring bits on, for example, this is uh, eight bits long uh, word that we are going to that we want to transmit to a receiver. And in order to achieve this goal, if you want to send this number here we should have hate wires for sending this, um, this information in a, in a parallel way this as you can imagine sometimes might be a limit so that's why serial communication is um, it's used and not parallel parallel communication okay because some most of the time to communicate from a um, transmitter and a receiver we just need to use one single um, uh, why? Okay. So, um, before we start exploring which uh, the, the protocols that I told you before, we need to uh, first understand some 
categorization for our serial communication. Uh, our serial communication might be synchronous or asynchronous, and when, when synchronous means that um, they share a clock, the, 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 the devices that are communicating share a clock, so they are synchronized one, uh, one to each other, okay? While in the synchronous, as you can imagine, serial communication method, we um, do not require to have a clock source uh, between the transmitter and the receiver. This is the first um, cate uh, categorization. Then we have half duplex and full duplex. In full duplex, we allow both parties to communicate simultaneously to one, uh, one to each other. Whereas in the half duplex system, um, a party can communicate with the other just um, when the other is not communicating uh, with uh, uh, with with yourself. Okay, so. Uh, they cannot communicate simultaneously. Think about walkie-talkie. This is the main uh, simple um, mm. example of a uh, um, half duplex communication system. So these are the, the two kinds of of um, categorization we're going to see: synchronous and asynchronous, half duplex and full duplex. Keep that keep that in mind. Okay. So let's start with user, which means. Um, Universal, synchronous, and asynchronous receiver and transmitter, um, which is a type of serial interface where uh, ca that can be programmed asynchronously and synchronously. In fact, most of the time mm, you can see uh, uh, asynchronous. We are going to we are going to use we're going to see asynchronous mode. That's why most of the time, yeah, you can also call this protocol as you you can see it called. UART in instead of USART, okay? Uh, actually, the, the full name is uh, USART because of the synchronous which has, but it's not that used, okay? And it is both half duplex and it is both full duplex. You may be wondering why, but we're gonna see how. And it's very simple to understand. <coughs> this is the wiring that requires a user communication. So these are these here are the pins that I show you uh, before here in this light here, and so these these are the, these pins, and they, in order to uh, achieve this kind of communication protocol, you need to connect a transmitting pin to a receiving pin, and um, and vice versa, a transmitting pin to another receiving pin for achieving full duplex, in fact. Um, as, as I said that it's both half duplex and full duplex, it's, um, and it's easy to understand why, because of the, of the wiring. And uh, they both need to be connected to the same ground um, references, which is the minus a reference of our um, secret, okay, for being to, to understand it easily, okay. Okay, uh, this is the how that I are transferred uh, in this protocol. Um, uh, they are transmitted uh, through frames, and each frame it's uh, it's a very short frame. Um, and um, it's composed by a start bit, which is a single bit, um, telling us that we are starting the communication. Uh, but, but telling to the, the yeah the the, the transmitter and the receiver that we are starting the communication. We, we have several uh, bits for for data for transmitting data. Um, then we have a parity bit, okay, that can be uh, one, zero or one bit. That it, it ju it's just one bit. It means none if it's zero or other even if it's one. And finally, we have a stop bit, okay. <coughs> it's it's composed main from one to four bits, and we're gonna see how. Um, with an example in short time how these are um, an example of this frame okay 
and why we need to keep in mind this categorization of the frame. So uh, being asynchronous, we need to set um, extra parameters to allow our mm, receiver and transmitter to communicate properly. Uh, these are the baud rate, which is the frequency of, mm, of the speed of, the, the, of that exchange, parity, the, the parity bit. So if you have, as I said, if it's, if it's zero or odd or even parity bit, the, mm. the data size and, uh, um, as, and the, the, the amount of stop bits. For, so for example, well, this is a very classical mm, parameter. These are very classical, uh, yeah, very classical mm, usage, for example, and you can set up uh, baud rate at as a 9600 hit uh, bit for the data field and uh, as a known which means so it's zero for saying that no parity bit are going to be used and one as the number of stop bits this is a very 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 widely used um, setting um, setting yeah, of, of our of uh, user communication okay so this was the first protocol and now we are going to see um, how um, excuse me I forgot to say which are the advantages of this protocol just to recap it to summarize it a little and um, it provides synchronous serial communication um, that's not this excuse me uh, I was wrong. Uh, it provides both synchrony and, and asynchronous serial communication. We just see uh, the asynchronous communication, but you can also use the synchronous communication. Uh, anyway, you uh, we see, and I told you that this rate here is widely is widely used, but you can set it. To whichever rate you want so this it's an advantage too and it's very easy as you said as, as we saw to wire the the mm, to, to objects that wants to communicate with each other uh, with this protocol and um, anyway we have the drawback that we can only connect two devices at a time, so it's a bit of limit. That's why we're going to see this protocol, which is another protocol widely widely used, which is I squared C. That means inter integrated uh, circuits, which is synchronous, multi master, multi slave, packet switch, single ended serial computer bus. And um, let's first understand some terminology. What master for example mean master means that it it's it, the master is a device which provides clock for communication and the slaves are the devices that um, that are not master so that are not uh, giving the, the clock but usually use the master clock uh, for um, communicate with the uh, with the uh, with the master okay It's what they use for those peripherals, which um, uh, which are very easy to use, and um, and we don't care, for example, in this situation about the the speed of the communication, and um, it's very easy because as you can, I squared C just uses two bidirectional uh, lines, okay. That pull that are pulled up with a resistor. So that means that uh, we have two resistors, two resistors here that pull up our the voltage of these lines. Okay, that, so if this voltage here is five volts, and um, with this reference here, with these resistors here, we have that also these lines are up to five volts. Okay, and. Um, they they are at five volts okay in um, 
um, in a quiet situation if we don't do anything, okay? <coughs> we have two wires, as I said. Uh, we have serial data line, SDA, which is used for sending and receiving data. And we have serial clock line, which is used for um, synchronize our device. So it's where the master uh, transmit its clock to the slaves okay um, so as you can see from the image and um, with just two wires you are able to connect one two three four objects communicating communicating with each other okay and uh, the problem is how to how a master can say hey slave two uh, please send me something or um, receive this command okay and this is the the difficulty but it's easy to task because uh, each uh, device has an address uh, yes excuse me oh I lost um, each device has an address which is transmitted at the beginning of the protocol and um, so Mm, it's transmitted at the beginning and from that moment on you start communicating with that uh, with that mm, device okay but everything starts as usual with a start beat okay as I said the mm, the voltage here is high because of the of the resistors that as we saw before so it is up and we when we use a start bit we pull the, the, the voltage down to zero okay so what this is what the master does then it starts writing uh, the address here once once the address it's transmitted it's also saying if he wants to write or read or read from the device device it's is um is trying to, to, to contact after he finish he has finished the sequence of of uh, of, uh, of bits he waits for an act that arrives from the from the from the slave telling him telling him okay I'm listening then the master is saying something which is where he wants to write or he wants to read the information okay uh, which is the so this is the address of the of the internal register within the um, the slave, okay? Uh, here, then after the sequence, he wait for another hack from the from the um, from the slave, and now once uh, this hack arrive, um, it's it's the turn of the the data bit sequence okay <coughs> and these are transmitted either by the master or by the slave depends on if you want to read or if you want to write something then you wait for an acknowledgement and as you can see tuck stop bit and we go back to five voltage again okay and um, this is the sequence it's how the i squared c protocol works so for summarize, for the beginning we have um, we have the address of the device of the slave device we want the master wants to contact and if it's a read or write then an act then the uh, register the address registers that the um, master wants to contact uh, and finally the that the data sequence among these three sequences there are the acknowledgement bits emitted by the slave okay so <coughs> to summarize again mm, which is the which are the advantages of uh, of this uh, of this protocol it's uh, the main advantage is that you have two wires and you can connect many 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 different uh, um, uh, masters and slaves okay this is a big problem. The drawback, as I said, it's that it's slow. Because as you can see, just for sending this data, you need before a big overhead for transmitting them. Okay. 
so fine we're gonna see we're gonna explore has high which is the maybe the faster solution that for communication that we are gonna see <coughs> and it consists a single mass in a single mass device and at least one slave device it's full duplex and it's synchronous uh, this is the most the, the fast one and uh, to achieve this the, this the speed we need several wires anyway um, uh, we have four signals a MISO M -I -S -O, which means master input slave output so as you can imagine is the signals the, the, the messages we, that are transmitted from the master to the slave and uh, uh, MOSI which is master output slave input and it's the um, the, 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 the wire where all the information goes from the slave to the master then we have the serial clock line <coughs> and finally the slave select line um, as you can, since it has a lot of lines it is mainly used for short distance communication okay and, but it allows us to achieve a very high speed in communication and um, this slide show you shows you how it's possible to communicate from for a master to several with several slaves just using the same three um, three um, three um, wires four o'clock M O S I and the four master input slaves output okay but for each slave we need a um, slave select uh, line and now we're gonna see how this is uh, uh, how these are useful for selecting the slave in the in the protocol <coughs> so remember that for each cycle a bit it's transfer from the master to the slave and a bit it's transfer from the slave to the master to the master okay because we have a full duplex kind of communication okay uh, yeah for selecting uh, a slave, you should um, put it, the voltage on the line to zero, and this is the signal for the for, for the slave for the selected uh, for the selected slave that the master is speaking with him. Okay, so with the time of the of the source clock, they start exchanging messages in this way. So as you can see. In here the communication is very 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 fast um, and we don't need overhead but we have um, a paralyzed communication in, in this sense okay, in the selection and in the transmission and in, in receiving a message so <coughs> it's way faster communicating from from the, from the for the master to the slaves and this was the um, this was all for what concerned to to the communication protocols. And let's now see um, another topic, which are the timers. So the the time the um, our board so the um, F four Z one R I S T M board has. Um, Two kind of timer, which are uh, six, uh, 16 bit timer, five 16 bit timer, and two, two 32 bit timer. Okay, and um, but what's a timer? A timer is a digital counter that increments or decrements uh, a variable according to a fixed input frequency, which is the clock source. Uh, this variable can be of any size and as I said in, in our boards there are both 16-bit ones and 32-bit -bit ones timer um, um, 
so the size means that for achieving an underflow or uh, an overflow um, we need to wait uh, more if we have an, a big timer because uh, depending on the input clock okay um, given, a, given by the, the oscillator or whatever and uh, for achieving a, a, an overflow or an underflow in a 32 bit timers requires much more time uh, of re of achieving it in a 62 in 16 bit uh, in a 16 bit one one okay so uh, a timer usually uh, has a clock source which most of the time is, a, is, a, is the oscillator of our board which has uh, which gives us um, time okay that can be pre-scaled in a timer so uh, dilating or mm, this this this, uh, this this clock in the time so uh, so it's this this clock is divided by a, a prescaler value which is a constant that it is as input for a timer counter uh, which increments its value uh, uh, clock by clock you say by one by one and um, this is quite useful because it allows us to count and to delay um, instructions or um, to wait a certain time to um, yeah delay instruction this is the main used uh, context okay um, STM timer anyway have a comparison logic to compare the timer to another specific value so uh, that it's set set by the software and it triggers some actions when the timer uh, when the timer counter register reaches this uh, this value so uh, here you can set a certain value when this value is the same of the timer counter uh, it uh, this bit here OCREF uh, within the our microcontroller it's uh, it's one okay uh, this is uh, a very useful uh, <coughs> facility. Um, a timer can increment um, or decrement. So we can have a, an up counting timer, which is this, for example, is an example of a uh, up counting timer. So we have a count, the register starts with zero and it, re achieve, it reaches an overflow when it tries to overcome six which is the size for example of our of our timer okay and when it uh, the counter uh, achieve doesn't have doesn't overflow an event is generated okay uh, and so we will have many events generated because of overflow that we can take into account for doing some some computation okay um, as you can see from one overflow to the other uh, we can count a pe we can count a period of an interval period which depends by this value which is for in our case depends on this value here okay it's computed like this <coughs> for what i said before uh, mm, that is the com using the compare and capture register uh, we can also achieve this task for example okay we have uh, an upcounting timer and we set the value of our CCR register to 3 so whenever the the the, the, the value of the count of the timer is higher or equal uh, to to uh, to this value we have a zero here okay in this uh, in in this line whereas we have the when the same the, the opposite situation while when we have a value which is lower the ccr uh, communication uh, the ccr register value okay and uh, once again the, the period it's the same but within this period we can count a duty cycle which is a ratio <coughs> of time where the um, our um, our um, 
line here is one so it's duty okay um, so for three uh, to the se uh, three seven uh, rush of time um, of the period we can we have this line uh, one okay we have both up counting timer but we also have down counting timer okay and uh, this is well, once again a timer that counts from six to zero okay so and when we reach zero we have an underflow and we have uh, another generated event for the un for the underflow and once again the period is the same and it depends the from of the 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 the, 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 um, the greatest uh, value that a timer has plus one for the clock period okay and this gives us the period of time and an event for underflow happens um, many times in according to these underflow events okay to, to the reach of the underflow again mm, oh, um, uh, this is an up counting mode but anyway this is mm, uh, this is the wrong slide anyway but uh, the idea is the same as before but for instead of an uh, up counting timer we would have a down counting timer uh, down counting timer and compare and composite values to to the CCR uh, CCR um, value and uh, and uh, f for having uh, another pin with, with another pin bit or CRF e e F, uh, one or zero depending on the on the value of the counter of our timer compared to the CCR okay um, I will add also something else to the, our timer which is the SysTick okay the SysTick um, it's, a, it's a very useful tool offered by um, um, STM uh, where in brief the CPU clock source um, is used to track timing and feed timer and it increments a uh, variable and generate an interrupt um, every programmable time interval so we use the CPU clock source for um, counting the uh, um, a timer um, for count for counting okay and this is very useful and uh, it achieve it allows us to use the CPU clock for achieving this goal um, this slide I think it's quite interesting for our case because um, f to generate a cystic interrupt okay we need to um, enable okay the uh, cystic interrupt and when uh, a counter is zero the count flag is one so in this situation and just in this situation uh, the cystic interrupt is um, generated uh, so whenever we want to use a timer we have to set up to set this bit here or oh, this is the case of cystic so it's this bit here but it will be the same for <coughs> for, for the other timers uh, we have to set it to one to tell us to tell our microcontroller to generate an interrupt whenever a count flag whenever a, a counter reach zero okay and Yes, that's that was I want to show. I want you to show this is the the the, the idea. Okay, let's move on and let's discuss the analog to digital converter. The analog to digital converter is a system that converts analog analog signal to a digital signal because, as you can imagine, the, um, the physical values are uh, analog. And um, a digital circuit, anyway, that needs to uh, do computation needs, needs digital values um, of this analog uh, signal uh, for um, handle them and compute them. 
and uh, so sampling is very important and we need to convert this um, this uh, to this analog signal in a certain with a certain protocol okay our microcontroller unit so for example um, if we want to um, turn this analog signal into a, um, a digital signal we will use a, a, a certain amount of bit okay for um, sampling it these are our resolution bits and uh, um, this resolution bit that's in this example are 12 <coughs> it means that we in our um, analog, analog to digital conversion we have uh, up to uh, 4096 different values for representing a certain analog uh, signal okay uh, so if we our working range of our analog to digital converter is from zero to uh, this um, voltage here then each bit would represent one millivolt okay of difference uh, 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 in the in the in this graph in this yeah in this diagram here but for example if this word our our range working range then we will have a different amount of uh, of, of, um, of millivolt per bit okay which in this case would be 0 0.73 so when we want to uh, sample to, to to convert an um, analog signal to a digital signal um, we should use this approach we need to initialize the uh, ADC peripheral we should define an interrupt routine okay mm, and send the sampling command and do all the stuff while, while we are waiting for the interrupt routine to uh, tell us that uh, the sampling of the ADC uh, was completed okay so this is done in loop the actually um, this here is done in loop and, uh, and um, this allows us to, 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 to obtain information from uh, the external world for our microcontroller we have spoken a lot of time about interrupts let's just really very really, really briefly see what these are and I think maybe many of you knows it for operating system courses, but for, but just to be for sake of completeness, uh, let's see it very fastly. Uh, sometimes, in, so in our application, sometimes we want we want to react very fast uh, to some events. Uh, for example, there is a timer overflow or an EDC completion sampling, as we saw before. And uh, when these interrupts happen, uh, a, current, a, a function, which is an handler, uh, yeah, the function that is working is stopped. And then an, an handler uh, takes care of executing something with relation to uh, the just generated uh, interrupt. So if he is. Uh, a timer overflow it means that has passed a certain amount of time and so we need to do something okay and for instead if we have a IDC completion sampling and uh, we have to do some stuff with the with the value that the sampling returns to us uh, we need to store it somewhere we need to compute it we need to you know, compute an average value or, or or compare it to a threshold and so on so interrupts are very useful this for these purposes and um, and the, 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 <coughs> the part of our microcontroller uh, the, our STM microcontroller that allow us to do it is the nested vector interrupt controller which is an advanced system for handling interrupts um, with priorities okay it's uh, we'll go 
too much into detail of this it, it would be to 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 advance to ex explore this but if you want you can do it anyway just for your information is that the the the, the interrupt uh, vector within the stm microcontroller allow us to set priorities among the the, the different interrupts okay Good. Um, these are the um, theoretical information that I want you to understand, and uh, I hope that those were, cl were clear. Anyway, if you have any doubts, uh, I can help you uh, whenever you want. And um, uh, or if you want, you can look for them, Google for them. But it's very very. The, plenty of you have any kind of information related with the topics that we have just seen uh, videos on YouTube and so on and so forth um, so this um, is the last chapter of our class and it's related to Unembed OS Unembed OS is a free open source embedded operating system that is designed specifically for things in Internet of Things and in thing and it is developed for all those micro, all those boards that uses an ARM Cortex M microcontroller in them. So you may have understood understood that there is plenty of different um, brands of, uh, of boards like Arduino, STM, STM. Uh, I showed you at the beginning some slide of Microchip, which is another brand for boards and microcontrollers maybe that most for my controller but um, yeah Ham and Bad OS allow us to interact with all e allow us to interact easily with all uh, ARM microcontroller okay the main features related with um, Ham and OS is that it is uh, easy very uh, easy to use uh, because uh, embed os um, ex uh, expose some apis that your application mm, can um, can use and uh, it, it is it is essentially a, a, a library a modular a modular library uh, so it's very easy to to to, to um, it's a portable and simple situation from one board to another so you can use the same board the same code for your app on several different uh, boards, okay? And it's, it's it's maybe I think it's the most important feature. It has some security facility for hardware, software, and communication. It is open source, and this is the link in GitHub. And um, it has a big supporting community and forum where you can ask all your dubs and if you have any problems uh, you uh, there is a big community that can help you it has several connectivity um, uh, facilities from bluetooth to wi-fi to LoRa that we are going to explore in the next um, in the next lectures and finally, it's um, possible to create uh, for, for, for users in general to create and develop um, libraries or drivers that can be used by other users, okay? Uh, coding for ARM OS it's very easy. You have two possibility to do it. Uh, you have an online IDE where no setup and it's the easiest way to get started and uh, we are going to use it we're gonna see how in very short time and uh, we have also offline tool chains <coughs> uh, which allow let you do more advanced stuff okay this is the architecture of our um, of our embed os and um, as you can see here you have some your application code that through some MadOS libraries that are developed uh, for by other users allow us to uh, replicate some some code that are that was um, created by someone else 
but uh, as you can see here you have a MetaOS API that will allow you, uh, let you communicate and using all these fa uh, facilities and also the hardware interfaces that are those those facilities those protocols that we um, as you can see here those protocols that we explored here so we, he's link holding uh, like a, a system call you can uh, easily create any kind of communication protocol instantiate any kind of uh, timer and uh, it doesn't matter on the on the on the, on the board you are badass does all the work for you and I think it's a very cool um, tool to use and um, this is just the the only example we're gonna see I'm gonna post all, all the codes for the for the for the um, workshop in this uh, in this repo every user has a, has a like kind of guitar profile but for embed OS where everybody can see its uh, its code so you can just clicking on these lights you will be redirected here and uh, uh, this is my profile and here we find as I said all, all, all other example that we're gonna see this is the m easier example and to import this um, this, um, this code into your IDE I said that the, the IDE is online you just need to use uh, this button and you will be redirected uh, to the IDE I already did this step so I'm gonna skip it and but you're gonna uh, someone's go someone gonna ask you where, which is the name of the new imported uh, project that you are creating each of these is a project okay and this is the project that we are going that we want to get that I've prepared for you to for today as you can see uh, we are going to explore it maybe in another lecture anyway we have a LED we define a, a LED here and we toggle it okay we also actually write something on the serial communication channel using user protocol but uh, we, mm, we are not gonna see it now we are going but we can also see it now and um, so this is the very simple code I, as you can see here I import embed libraries and uh, you need to select your board otherwise uh, BadOS the, the IDE doesn't know who who this code is for okay so uh, this is the board uh, that I'm using Nucleo F401RE I you, you can add it from here and you you have to look for it typing its uh, its its name once you have imported in you into your IE you uh, you can select among uh, you you have it here and you can select it uh, like the others the other ones that I have here okay like I, I could select it this this but okay once you have selected you you push this you click on that and uh, generating the the, the the binary code for your microcontroller it's very very easy because you just need to uh, click on here compile uh, this dialog will appear and once uh, if the compilation terminates correctly uh, you will download um, a bin file that will appear you here and uh, adding your this, this this code application this binary code to your board it's very easy I've just I've just plugged in my oops, uh, my my microcontroller that it's very easy to do with um, with a USB and uh, you plug it in and uh, you just need to copy and paste it it's like a USB drive and uh, it will disappear for a moment and will it will come back and as you can see here it should print hello world this program runs since blah, 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 seconds and uh, if we want to see it 
it should be yeah here it's communicating with this it's as a user communication as i said it's communicating with this board right here and this is the, 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 the this is the serial um, terminal you have to download it i'm using screen for ubuntu but it's plenty of it but we're going to to see it better and so we just need to launch it uh, okay and this the program runs since dot seconds okay um this is all for today i hope i was clear and uh, for any dubs and anything you can contact me on slack or whatever uh, thank you for watching i also have a slide for that thank you and uh, uh, bye, -bye.